The town of Skagway, if you're not familiar with it, is really another fascinating Alaska experience. <laughs> it's supposed to be a throwback because it is yeah. an old gold mining town.、Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the charm of the town goes back to those gold mining days, and that, you know, there are wooden sidewalks and there's a lot of wooden architecture. You know, it's like it sort of feels like you're in a town that's out of the, the 1800s. <laughs> Thing for us was being there on days when a cruise ship was not in port. And it was a night and day difference between days where a cruise ship was in port and days that there weren't. It was like a ghost town on days when a cruise ship was not there. Skagway, at first glance as a town, it does have its charms. But you know, we quickly learned that Skagway is all about tourism. It's、mm -hmm. certainly a very touristy place.、Mm -hmm. In fact, we were told that the cruise ships actually own most of the businesses there.、Mm -hmm. And so most of the people working in Skagway are seasonal employees、mm -hmm. that are there,、uh, employed by the cruise ships. You know, populating this town basically. Yeah, most of them are only there for the summer because we were there at the end of the season, and most of the stores in the downtown area were closed or in the process of closing for the season. And they were boxing up everything in every store, taking everything off the walls. You know, they were really rolling up the sidewalks pretty much when we were there. You know, it was very interesting to be there on days when a cruise ship was not in town because on those days, most of the stores were closed. Several of the restaurants were closed because, you know, I guess they just don't have much, you know, need for being open because they don't have a lot of customers on days when the cruise ships aren't there. Now, when the cruise ships are there, it's a hustling, bustling little town, you know, with packed bars and restaurants and lots of things to do. There is the famous Skagway train that you can take. <laughs> Not do it because it didn't run on the days that the cruise ship wasn't there, and on the days the cruise ship was there, it was sold out. So I guess it was just because we were so late in the season, we sort of missed our opportunity for that. But I've heard it's beautiful to do that train ride. Well, well my name is Madam Annie Witchway, and it would be my pleasure to offer you your very last chance of 2012 to come. There's another fun place called the Red Onion,、yeah. which is kind of an old bar slash brothel. And although I didn't、uh, sample <laughs> any of the brotheling, <laughs> it's not a brothel anymore. I may have had a cold beverage or two. Yeah, but they do have a really fun tour that you can do that'll take you upstairs and sort of show you the brothel. And I know that sounds terrible, but it really just shows that there were basically no women in Alaska back during the gold rush. And so somebody said, hey, let's open a brothel. And they were very prosperous. <laughs> yeah. Brothel. Now, this building was first erected in 1897 and opened as a working saloon and brothel in 1898. And the first thing you would have seen behind that bar would have been a row of 10 little dolls. Now, these 10 dolls were meant to represent. The ten live working dolls living upstairs by hair color, eye color,、uh, the color of the dress that they may or may not have been wearing at the time. But it was just interesting、business. because they had a lot of like decoration that they had there. Like they had a, a curling iron that they would literally like screw into the ceiling where like a single light bulb would hang. They would screw their curling iron there and stand on a chair to curl their hair. So Girls, if you think you got it rough now, just be glad you weren't back in Alaska in the gold rush days. Oh, now, gentlemen, when you go downstairs, I got a favor to ask you, all right? I want you guys to look worn out. Put a <laughs> smile on those faces, and ladies, look like you learned something up here with me, because I got a reputation to keep and bills to pay. You got it? Well, yeah, under my wife's supervision. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, Skagway had its charms. If you want to get a good deal on Alaska T-shirt, go to Skagway in early October. That's because right. Because they're kind of boxing everything、yeah. up, putting it away for the Everything's season. Everything's cheap. We hung out in Skagway for a day or two. I mean, which is 
frankly, plenty of time. Yes, plenty of time. <laughs> Since we were really flying by the seat of our pants, we ended up actually parking our rig somewhere in the streets of Skagway yeah. and just sort of boondocking we overnight. Par- basically parked overnight on the street. It worked out fine for us. Now, of course, we were there at the very end of the season, and that's why we were able to do that. That's right. So if you're there in the middle of summer, you probably won't be able to do Yeah, that. I wouldn't count on that. <laughs> but, you know, leaving Skagway, we went by and old do you remember the old cemetery yes we went by that yes. had like it's it was i guess sort of the first cemetery in town that it would set up for the gold miners who was who were out there. it was a very interesting kind of hike that you did through this like little hillside right on the outskirts of town and you know they had these really elaborate tombstones i thought for them to be as old as they were and it was just an interesting little stop on your way out of town. So. Yeah. And then from Skagway, we kind of drove out and got back onto the Alcan. Yeah, we went up. Actually, we drove sort of a, a side little highway that went from Skagway up towards Whitehorse, Yukon Territory. So we did go to uh, Whitehorse one more time, and that was basically just to get supplies and groceries because we knew that was our last chance, really, until we got really far south in British Columbia. Again, in that part of the world, Whitehorse, a town of about 15,000 people, is basically Paris, France. Yeah. It, it is the heart of civilization. So we stocked up on supplies. By the way, in October, some of the dump stations and so forth there were already closed for the season. So from Whitehorse, we headed south Mm -hmm. to a place called Watson Lake. Mm -hmm. You might be familiar with Watson Lake because it has the famous signpost forest. People have have left signs from all over, I guess, North America, or really all over the world in this place called Watson Lake. You're going to drive the Alcan and you're going to go through Watson Lake. Make sure you bring your own little sign. Most people just have a little piece of wood that they've painted or they've carved their names into and what city they're from, and you can hang it in the signpost forest. We left a sticker. Yeah. The thing about Watson Lake, here's where you make your decision. Yeah, this is decision time. Do you want to stick with the Alaska Highway and for most of us go back the way you came? Or if you're interested in seeing the left coast of North America, you can take something called the Cassiar Highway or the Stewart Cassiar Highway. Mm -hmm. And we decided to take the, the Cassiar Highway because we wanted First of all, to see something different. Secondly, we wanted to visit some friends uh, in the Pacific Northwest and Mm -hmm. in California. Yeah, so that just sort of made more sense for us in the direction we were heading, and it gave us something new to see on the way south. So from Watson Lake, Yukon Territory, you head south, and there is actually one other little site in Alaska that you get to see. (laughs) And it's this little town called Hyder. Yes. And Hyder is right next to Stewart on the map. Stewart is in British Columbia. Mm-hmm. Hyder is in Alaska. You have to drive through Stewart to get to Hyder. There's, that's the only way to get there unless you came in on a boat. Well, a, few, a mile or two back, we saw a sign saying, watch for horse. And so we were watching for horse, and we saw a horse. <laughs> <laughs> so when you get to Hyder, uh, Alaska. Really, we stayed in Stewart, British Columbia, because it's it was just a, a bigger little town. When you get there... Two things. Beautiful glacier right outside of Stewart. Yes, there is a beautiful glacier. There's a fantastic glacier. glacier, so that's one reason you go to Stewart. The other reason... Is you get to Hyder, Alaska, and there is a bear viewing kind of like bridge or platform that runs the length of a creek in the town of Hyder. 
And it's really interesting. They basically have this really cool creek that runs through town and they built an elevated like platform the length of the creek in the main part of their little town. And so you can walk up onto the platform and look over and see bears eating. Now we were there after the salmon rush had happened. So we didn't see any bears on it when we were there, but we've heard and we saw pictures of times when it's just flush with bears. You know, they're just everywhere. Actually, yes, we, we did, did see, see a bear. bear in the campground in Hyder, just walking through the campground. So that's reassuring. <laughs> you so don't see a bear at the creek. The, you'll see bears right outside say, your camp. I also will say that the border crossing from Stewart, British Columbia, into Hyder, Alaska, was the most thorough crossing I think we've ever encountered. But it took us about 45 minutes to get back into British Columbia from Hyder. And I think that's maybe longer than we spent in Hyder. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> just a little bit of context. We're talking about really, really small towns here. I mean, I mean, Stewart, I don't know what the population is. Hyder, I think there are more bears than people. Yeah, you know? if there's and 100 people there, I would be shocked. <laughs> if but. you ever watched the Andrew Griffith show and you remember Barney Fife, I mean, if Barney Fife was, was a, border a female patrol. Border Patrol agent in Canada, that's what we're dealing yeah. with. So, you know, we made it back over and we finally got back out of, of Hyder. And Hyder was sort of our last <laughs> dose of Alaska on this trip. And we're back in British Columbia. Not a whole lot to say about our trip back down uh, the Cassiar Highway. It was definitely it was rugged and beautiful. Uh, every bit, I would say, probably as beautiful as the Alaska Highway mm -hmm. and parts of the Alaska Highway. Maybe we more so in places. We stayed at a really nice campground on the northern part of the Cassiar Highway. And it was a, a state park that was on a lake. Mm -hmm. It was very scenic. We were about the only people there besides the host. <laughs> and there were beginning to be some snow flurries. Yeah, we got snow flurries. You know, it's kind of funny is when we started this trip, we were wearing uh, shorts, lightweight shirts, and it was about 100 degrees outside. We were worried about our air conditioner being broken. Last night, the temperature must have been right around freezing and uh, there's a good bit of snow on the ground. Not a good bit. Uh, Christy says it's not a good bit. Well, to me, a good bit is like, you know, an inch. To Christy, a good bit is an inch. So this, kind of like this is bit. not a good bit of snow to Christy. So Christy's light not concerned dusting. at all, because well, this I is just a light dusting. It's not a good bit of snow. I am concerned that there's snow at all. But... No, it's not even a good bit of snow. It's a light dusting. I think if we hadn't been so late in the season, we might have lingered a little longer yeah. because uh, it's definitely beautiful countryside. We were up just there. worried about getting snowed in up there, and we were right on the cusp of when you were required to have snow chains. Right. So, so you know. we experienced some of the coldest nights we've ever had in our airstream on the way back down. Yeah. We've told that story elsewhere here on YouTube. There's there's a little town called 100 Mile House in British Columbia. It was uh, extremely cold. It was 14. Um, Ladies, don't let your husband say, we're just gonna wait and get our propane in the US because it'll be so much cheaper. Yeah. Just say no to that idea because you will freeze your took us off in a hundred mile house when it's 14 degrees outside and you run out of propane. Well, mm -hmm. Everything in Canada is so expensive. I don't care, it would have been worth the extra 20 bucks because it was miserably cold. It's the coldest I've ever been in my whole life. I had on um, long johns and then I had fleece pajamas over that. I had on at least three pair of socks. I had a fleece hat on and gloves and a scarf and I was under like three blankets sleeping and I was still cold. You see, we will never, <laughs> ever, ever do that ever again. Just well, in case you're wondering. We'll see about that. No, we won't. Mm -mm. So we came back down through British Columbia and um, we actually did a little detour through Whistler. Yeah, we took the sky to sea or sea to sky. I can't sea to remember. sky, this very challenging sea. tow. But this is an aspect of towing that I think is very important that people don't really think about. It's not just getting your camper up over the mountain, it's coming down on the other side. And we're currently uh, somewhere in some mountains in British Columbia and there's a 13% downgrade, which is really, really steep. So we've got like 7,000 pounds of weight pushing down behind us. 
couple things you can do. First of all, you can switch your tow vehicle into tow haul mode, which it ought to be in anyway, but that provides a little bit of engine braking and it helps with your keeping your transmission cool too. Secondly, shift down in a gear or two. That really helps a lot maintain your speed. You know, even though we're just sort of creeping along, it's still kind of a white knuckle towing experience for sure. It is a very challenging tow. It's gorgeous, but back and forth and back and forth and narrow. And if you were much longer than our rig, I don't know if I would recommend people do that. Yeah, it's um, a very challenging, demanding tow into Whistler on that sky to sea, sea to sky highway. Right. And then, you know, we stayed in Whistler for, I think, maybe two nights. And that's where we did some major damage to our RV because they were doing road work there. And somebody put out their cones too close together and we hit one and that wasn't good. But Whistler yeah. was a beautiful town. I would like to go back in the winter time. And then the drive into Vancouver from Whistler, I thought was really pretty. It was nice. Because you're along, you know, the water. You know, once we made it to Vancouver, we were really practically on the border with Washington State. Mm -hmm. And we happened to be there at the time of Canadian Thanksgiving. Which and is apparently, a terrible time terrible to time. cross the border. Because, because every Canadian within like a 50 mile radius of the border is coming into Washington State so they can do shopping because it's so much cheaper in the U.S. So you sit in your line to get in the U.S. for like three and a half hours. Yeah, we, that's how long. it literally took us hours to get from Canada over into the state of Washington. It was three or four hours just sitting in line. Well, I was very thankful that we had our own bathroom on board <laughs> and that yeah. we had our own kitchen because there were people literally getting out of their cars and walking blocks to get to gas stations to go to the bathroom because you're just stuck in this traffic that's just sitting completely still. So be wary of that. Don't cross on a weekend. That was bad timing That's for us. right. So at that point, we were back in the good old lower 48 and our Alaska adventure <laughs> had pretty much uh, at least closed that chapter and, you know, looking back on it, I certainly think this is a great way to go. If you live in the western United States, you may want to go up the Cassiar Highway. In fact, that's probably what you will do. It's what makes the most sense from yeah. a geographic standpoint. If you're wanting to sort of see, um, you know, like Banff and Jasper National Parks, you can cut up from the Washington State area. And instead of hanging a left to go up the Cassiar Highway, you'd sort of hang a right and go through like Kamloops, I think is the name of the town. Mm -hmm. And you can cut over and see Banff and Jasper and then cut back north and catch the beginning of the Alaska Highway. Mm -hmm. So you could do that full loop pretty easily, you know, going up and down if you're coming from the West Coast and it wouldn't be terribly out of your way. And you would get to see the whole Alaska Highway because I think it is something worth driving at Absolutely. least once. So even if you are on the West Coast, whether you're going north or south, one direction, you know, I would recommend going the full Alaska Highway and doing the Cassiar because you see just different things and, you know, different scenery. And I think British Columbia and the Yukon Territory offer just incredible camping opportunities. Yeah, The scenery so. is just so gorgeous. So if you're an American and have never really explored Canada, you really should think about doing so, especially mm -hmm. in, in those parts of Canada. I can absolutely vouch for the scenery, the wildlife. There's just uh, so much to see and do that uh, you really should take advantage of it. We have a vast continent before us to yeah. explore. You know, looking back, I really felt the Alaska trip was the best trip we had taken with our Airstream, and I guess it still is the best trip. Yeah. Like, it's the most ambitious. It's certainly the longest. Uh, dramatic terrain, mm -hmm. you know, dramatic wildlife viewing, a lot of just interesting cultural differences, I think, yeah. along the way. That, you know, for a lot of us, it's a once-in-a-lifetime journey, uh, but you definitely should should try to make it. I think it's, uh, it's very rewarding. Yeah, it's totally worth the... The trouble to get there, I guess that's a way to put it. Takes yeah, a lot of time. Takes a lot of time. Takes money. 
takes money. It's hard on your rig. I mean, you know. It is. And, you know, it's ambitious. I mean, you're going to be in places where you're 100 miles from the nearest gas station. So you have to think about those things. And as long as you plan for them and you, you know, have a plan, I I just can't recommend it any more than we have, I guess. If you have an RV and you have the time to do it, do it because you will not regret it. I absolutely think we will be going back. I'm confident of that. You know what you need to do? You need to subscribe to our YouTube channel so when we go back and post videos about it, you'll be in the know. That's right. And you can also tell us what you want to see in the videos, (laughs) things that maybe we didn't cover on our last visit that you want us to make sure we get footage of this time. Let us know. Yeah. We'll do our best. On that note, if you have any advice or tips that you want to share with our community about taking an RV to Alaska and bringing it back home, please post a comment uh, underneath this video on YouTube or on our website, and uh, we'll be certainly reading it, and we would greatly appreciate hearing from you. Yeah, because we know there are a lot of you out there that have been to Alaska numerous times. Some people go every year, and it's just their place where they camp for the summer. And so if you are one of those people, I know that you probably have a lot of great insider scoop, and if you're willing to share any of it, please do. We welcome it all. Yeah, the the point of our YouTube channel, we share what we know with you and we also learn from you because, you know, we have a pretty big community here now and we can all kind of help each other have better experiences when we're out there on the road. Nobody, I think, is truly an expert because every environment is so different. Every trip is so different that I think you learn something every time you take a trip and... So being able to share that with people or learn from other people is super helpful. All right, guys, we are Sean and Christy Michael of Long Long Honeymoon. As always, thank you for tuning in. If you're new here, please subscribe. And we'll sign off with a hearty Lolo Ho. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. By popular demand, Long Long Honeymoon is now on Patreon. If you want to be a Loloho VIP, check it out. <laughs>